So the obedience of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Sunnah, the following of the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in this ayah is equated with loving Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. You know, we say love Allah. People sometimes talk about fearing Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, but then there are those who say we have to love Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. How do you express love? To an entity that you do not see, you cannot touch. I can express love towards children. I can pass my hand with compassion over their hair. I can hug them. I can <coughs> kiss them. I can express love towards my family members. But how do you express your love to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala? And in this verse of the Quran, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is saying the way you manifest your love is by following. And obeying Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is a good test for yourself too. If you think, if you want to judge how much you love Allah subhanahu wa taala, you ask yourself, how particular are you in your pursuit of following the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam? In the same ayah. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala says, "Allah will love you and forgive your sins if you follow and obey Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam." This is clearly the most direct command in the Quran to obey the Sunnah and by equating it to love. <coughs> most scholars of the Fiqh have used this to basically say, "This is why we should follow the Quran and Sunnah. This is the sources." Of Islamic law, these are the sources of Sharia, etc. This ayah is something that they use very profoundly. But in a hadith, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam put it even more beautifully than anything that any scholar has done. He says, "Oh my son, I found this very interesting, in which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is addressing all the Muslims as 'Oh my son,' and it makes sense if we think of his wives as 'Ummahat.'" Mothers of the believers. So Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam saying, "Oh my son, the one who cherished my sunnah, the one who cherished my sunnah without doubt, he has cherished me." <coughs> you can't value Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam without valuing what he did. The best way to understand the sunnah are three things: the things that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said. The things that he did, and the things that he observed and did not forget. Those three things are his sunnah, his fail, the things he did, his howl, the things he said, and it's called takhari, the things that he saw and did not forbid. He approved of. So if he saw people raising horses and he did not stop them from doing that, then that is permissible. That becomes the sunnah. So the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying, "Oh my son, the one who cherished my Sunnah without doubt, he has cherished me, and he who cherishes me will be with me in Jannah." Subhan. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has connected three things: the love of him, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Shukran Yaqi, has connected three things here: the love of him with the following of his Sunnah, and the following of his Sunnah as a means of entering Jannah. In that sense, it is truly very beautiful. One day, somebody came to Aisha radhiyallahu anha and asked her, "Can you describe to me the personality of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam?" And she said. Have you not seen the Quran? He is, he is the personification of Quran itself. He is the living Quran. It makes beautiful sense now if you realize that the Quran is also Zikr Allah, and one of the names of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is also Zikr Allah. So you ask yourself, what is the personality of the Quran? If you want to understand the personality of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you ask yourself, what is the 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 Quran is Quran. It is that which discerns between what is right and what is wrong. To be like Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is to have the capacity to distinguish between what is right 
and what is wrong to become a cognitive moral being. The Prophet is also like the Quran, which is Kareem, noble, mubeen, clear, noor, light, Buddha, guidance, rahmah, mercy, shifa. And we know this. The Prophet is also referred to as shifa, that, that which heals us. He's also zikr, he's also haq, the truth. So these are the things and these are the characteristics of Prophet Muhammad <coughs> and also the characteristics of the Quran which coincide. So coming back to the original question that I wanted to pose, so what does it mean to have pursued the smart sunnah? Like your smartphone, like your smart cities, like smart policies, can you think of a smart sunnah? And I submit to you this, that so far, and most often scholars will talk about the falling of sunnah by asking the question, what did Muhammad do? What did he do? So when you confront a situation, you are supposed to ask the question, what did Prophet Muhammad do in a similar situation? And then you act upon it. Now there are lots of aspects of sunnah which may not be something that we can do today, such as practice polygamy, ride a camel, live in the poverty that he lived in. So I submit to you that the smart way of following the sunnah is not asking the question, what did Muhammad do? But by asking yourself the question that in this situation, what would Muhammad do? Okay, there's a very subtle distinction. Please follow it carefully. If you ask the question, what did Muhammad do? Then you're going backwards. But if you ask yourself the question, what would Muhammad do? you're moving forward. You're saying, I'm not talking about the circumstances of 7th century Arabia. I'm talking about 21st century America. I'm living here today. If the Prophet ﷺ was living here today, what would he do in this particular situation? That is the smart question. That is a difficult question. That is the true way of practicing the Sunnah. It is not through imitation, but through emulation. You emulate the Prophet ﷺ, not imitate. Yes, grow a beard. That's the sunnah. That's a great thing. But when we deal with political challenges, when we deal with social challenges, what would Prophet Muhammad ﷺ do? To answer that question, what would he do in these circumstances, you have to understand two things. You have to understand the nature of prophets and also the characteristics of Prophet Muhammad According to one very famous scholars, several of them actually, Fadi Ayyad, who wrote the book Ash-Shifa, one of the most authoritative biographies of Prophet Muhammad Ghazali and others, all prophets have four characters. You'll find these characteristics, I will list them. Four characteristics in all prophets and there are four things which are missing from all prophets. And so if you want to truly live life according to Sunnah, then don't worry about the length of your pants or the length of your beard, but worry about having these qualities in your personality. Number one, every prophet was truthful. He never lied. We know this. That's why even in the day of Jahiliya, Prophet Muhammad was called Al-Amin because of his sheer honesty. Even the kuffar, even after the Prophet's mission began, would swear by his honesty. There's a very famous episode in which the Prophet ﷺ said, if I told you there was some threat outside those, beyond those mountains, would you believe me? And they said, yes. And he said, why? And they said, because you've never lied to us. And he said, why don't you believe me when I talk about one God today? So this is an important characteristic. What you will not find in Prophets is lying. They do not lie. They do not make false promises. So if you want to practice sunnah, the smart way is not about practicing habits, but practicing and emulating his character. Make sure that when you speak, you speak the truth and do not lie. That is living life according to sunnah. Number two, to be trustworthy and not be someone who violates a manner. Who does khiyana in a man? 
no prophet had ever violated his amendment. So be truthful and be trustworthy. The third characteristic of all prophets were to bear witness. The third characteristic of all prophets is to bear witness. Bear witness that there is one Allah and also bear witness to Allah about this verse. We are here to bear witness. We are looking at the verse and we will bear witness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about what we witnessed. Did we stand up for justice or not? And then as far as the world is concerned, we bear witness that there is no Allah, there is no God but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is his messenger. That is what every prophet did was to bear witness to God. Those, you will never find in the prophets hiding the truth. Because they bear witness, they never conceal the truth. So if you want to live life according to Sunnah, do not hide the truth. Speak the truth. And the fourth characteristic is intelligence. I found this very interesting and amusing. No prophet was without reason, was intelligent, was active. So don't be stupid. As simple as that. One way of practicing the sunnah of all the prophets is please do not be stupid. These are some of the four most important characteristics. So the smart way of practicing the sunnah is not through imitation, but through emulation. And the way you emulate the Prophet ﷺ is to try and incorporate his personal characteristics in your personality. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulullah. Your brothers and sisters, I usually do not, I'm not preachy even when I'm preaching. But forgive me for the next three, four minutes, I'm going to be in a preaching mode. And I'm basically going to identify things that you must, you must bring to realization in your lives in the way you do. If you really want to practice the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, number one, pursue knowledge. If you want to be a Shifa, if you want to be like Rasulullah, pursue knowledge. Doesn't mean just going to college and getting degrees. Make sure that you spend at least half an hour a day, a day, an hour reading. And please do not consider reading on your cell phone, iPads, or something in social media as reading. Read books. Every time you feel the urge to go to YouTube to learn your deen, please move away, read some book. If nothing, read the Quran. Read it in its translation. Read the Ahadith. All Sunnis say, we like to believe in Sunnah. Have you even seen the Sitta Sahih, the six books of, of the Sunnah? I've not even seen a masjid where all six collections are present. Go get them. They are now all available, in fact, for free on the webs. Go read the Sunnah. Pursue knowledge. Number two, try to be gentle and kind. These are the attributes of Rasulullah. He was sent as mercy to humanity. At least be mercy to your neighbors and your friends and your family members. Try to have humor. It's an important aspect of Prophet Sallallahu life. Abu Huraira used to constantly visit him all the time. And one day the Prophet Sallallahu told him, if you, listen, if you visit less, I will love you more. And he said it in a very poetic fashion. He used to exercise humor. So be nice. Humor is a way of removing tension. We live in a time in society where there is a lot of stress and anger, hostility. Be funny. Love the poor. This is very important. It's not just about helping the poor. It's about loving the poor. Charity is separate. Love the poor. One man, one comes and told Prophet Rasulullah said, Ya Rasulullah, I love you. And the Prophet said, then get ready for poverty. Because loving me is like loving poverty. In one very beautiful prayer, the Prophet once said, I'm proud of my poverty. Fakr and fakra, they're very identical words in Arabic. Pride and poverty. And he said, I have pride in my poverty. So love poverty it doesn't mean that you become poor, but learn to respect those who are poor. 
People who look down on poor people have kibber. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, if you have even an ounce of kibber in your heart, there is no place where you will jump. So love the poor and therefore do charity. And be nice especially to women. We are living through a very strange period where abuse of women seems to have gone up in spite of all the talk about the importance of equal rights across genders. Prophet Sallallahu said it many times, including in this final khutbah, that the best among us is the one who is the best to their women, to your mothers, to your sisters, to your daughters, to your wife. Practice jihad al nas Try to become a better person every day. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if you are the same person for two days in a row, consider yourself a loser. This is an authentic hadith. He said, if he actually used the word, Arabic word for loser, bin al khasirun, those who are losers. If you are the same person two days in a row, consider yourself a loser, which means you have not improved. And that's what jihad and nafs is, to work on yourself, do muraqaba and try to improve yourself.